What's up guys, this is Bumpkins here with another Spotlight video. This time I'm going to be talking about Maniac of New York number one from Aftershock. This is written by uh, Elliot Callen, uh, drawn by, or art by, Andrea Muti, I think is how you pronounce his name, and then Taylor Esposito on letters. This comment came out just this past Wednesday on February 3rd, and the the simplest way to describe it, although it does get it, I think it's going to be a little bit more in-depth than this, but the simplest way to describe it is, think about Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, or maybe Michael Myers from Halloween. Jason's probably a little bit better of a comparison, but think about that type of kind of old-school 80s slasher killer, uh, and that's exactly what this book is about. So there he is, Harry the Maniac is what they call him. But this is a little different in that if you think about those movies, the killer is always unstoppable, right? You, you shoot him, you stab him, you throw him off a building, and he just keeps coming back, right? Same thing here, except the citizens, the cops, the officials, everybody, they've sort of come to terms with the fact that he's unstoppable, and they just deal with it, you know? So instead of trying to stop him, put him down, he has actually just become almost literally part of the morning weather and traffic report. There's even a scene here uh, where there's a, a morning newscaster saying, you're watching the New York One Rail Road and Maniac Report for April 3rd, 2020. Morning, New York. We've got delays on the Q, L, 2 and 3 lines and unsubstantiated Maniac Harry sightings downtown. So, I mean, just right there, it's just, just so casual. Yeah, here's traffic, here's weather, and here is where uh, Harry the Maniac was most recently seen. Here's where we had some killing, so maybe you want to stay away from that. And that is, I mean, to me, that's fantastic. And when, when I first heard about the what the story was, basically it was just, I, I just read it as, there's a maniac killer, and they've given up trying to stop him, and they just live with him. I didn't know he was actually sort of part of the morning routine, the morning report. That's, uh, I thought that was pretty uh, clever. So the story centers around two women. Uh, one is named Gina Green. She has been brought on to head the Maniac Harry, or Harry the Maniac task force, which sounds like a great idea, right? And it's a job that she takes very seriously. She wants to put together a team. She wants to meet with the mayor, put some plans in place examine killing patterns and you know all that kind of stuff she really wants to do her homework on this and all the other cops in the station just laugh at her and say yeah yeah that's that we've tried that that's been done uh you don't have a team you're not getting one she has a, a crappy office that kind of stuff it's almost just like busy work well, let's just put her on this team over here she does recruit another officer named zelda pettibone and she um we we get a little bit of back a little bit of backstory on her about I guess supposedly she snitched on some other bad cops so a lot of the police department sort of looks down on her so she's kind of a, an outcast in the police department so these two cops team up uh, uh, Gina brings on Zelda to be I guess on her task force even though it's I don't know if you can call it that with just two people but uh, they you know. Zelda's a little bit more jaded. She, she's she been around. She understands that Harry is part of... She, he's just kind of baked into New York culture at this point. She realizes that things have been tried before. We're never going to, you know, we're never going to get rid of him. But Gina is a little bit more stubborn than that. Um, so she, she has a map. She, like I said, she's examining uh, killing patterns, things like that. And... I mean, that's pretty much it for this first issue. Uh, there's not a lot that happens in this first issue. There's, uh, we, do, we don't even see Harry the Maniac that much. Um, this, this first issue just is kind of setting up the world, setting up the story, establishing the characters and things like that. Um, but I thought it was... Well, I won't show that page because it's towards the end. I don't want to spoil anything. But... Um, you know, I thought this was a really, you know, there's there's a there's, you know, a good look at the artwork and, you know, them examining patterns and things like that. There is one section here that sort of introduces what I think is going to become a mystery, 
about Harry the Maniac. Uh, I won't say what it is here. Um, but I mean, I don't think it would be spoiling anything, but I still, I don't want to, you know, say anything about it. But I, this is, this is just a setup. But, you know, I'm really excited for this. I think if you are into, so the purpose of these spotlight videos is to shine a light on stories that you may find interesting. Uh, it, these are not spec videos. These aren't review videos. Uh, these are just me talking about comics with really interesting stories that you might find interesting as well if you're maybe wanting to break into comics or if you're looking just for something a little bit different to read. I probably won't really talk about superhero books that much. I just want to talk about good stories in comics. Um, and this is one if you are into, you know, old school slasher movies, uh, Friday the 13th, Halloween, like I said, or any of the other ones, um, you might find this really interesting. It sounds like a really simple premise, and it is, but I feel like they could take this in some interesting direction. They could take this in, into some interesting directions, and I'm hoping they do, but it's a little bit too early to tell yet. It may just end up being, oh, yeah, Harry is a, is a killer, and we've tried this, that, and the other thing, and we just deal with him, and we got a couple of cops that are trying to put him away or put him down. But I feel like they could take it into some interesting directions. Uh, like I said, with the one, there's just one, almost like a throwaway line that they don't dwell on, but actually could turn into a fairly big mystery about Harry himself. Um, and it's that kind of stuff that I want to see. I want to see how they deal with him. Uh, obviously, the city is dealing with him, but I want to see how, what these two cops do together. If they unearth any new information, uh, I hope, hope, what I'm hoping is that they dig into his backstory, that they learn a little bit more about him that maybe nobody else has looked into before, and then that opens some more doors for some more crazy things. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all there is to say about this issue. It's kind of hard to talk about it because, like I said, not a lot that happens. It's just a setup for everything. But if you're into any of that kind of stuff, you may want to check this out. Um, because I found it really interesting and I was sold on it before I even read it. But after I read it, I was I wanted the second issue immediately. In the third and the fourth, I just wanted to learn more and more and more about the paths, the paths that they may go down. So uh, one thing I'll say too real quick, and this isn't really specific to this particular book, but, real, but more just to Aftershock in general. They are very quickly becoming one of my favorite publishers. I don't have a lot from them yet. But one thing I'll say is the quality, the physical quality of their books is better than any other book from any other publisher that I'm getting right now. It's definitely way better than Marvel. Uh, it's better than the um, the variant covers for the DC books that have the cardstock cover. It's better than most image stuff. Uh, every Aftershock comic that I've gotten so far, I've got a couple issues of Kaiju Score, uh, I Breathe the Body, I think was theirs. Um, Every issue that I have is this really nice cardstock. I don't know if you can, it's not just paper, it's this real nice cardstock. And then the pages in the inside are really high quality, really smooth and glossy pages. They aren't just like newsprint paper, which, you know, I mean, I don't think many comics use those anymore, but even they're even a thicker and better quality, like I said, than what Marvel or DC are using, or even what a lot of Image is doing. Um, and it's hard to show that on, or but I mean, if you could feel this, if, it's super smooth. And the paper is a little bit thicker, but still not so thick that you can't. And like I said, it has nothing to do with this particular comic, but just all Aftershock books are this way now. It does cost $5, and I think most, if not all of their books cost $5. Um, but dude, it's worth it. I mean, just this feels so good reading this. Um, the, the smoothness of the pages, the nice cardstock cover, the um, you know the the pages help the colors in this and maybe it's the colors of this issue that really made me notice it. Um, I mean you can tell like I like the coloring in this issue a lot of greens and blues and sort of oranges and um, but yeah so fantastic quality of a really interesting story. So guys, if you're looking for something good to read and you're into kind of 80 slasher stuff and you're into good mysteries, maybe check this out. Maniac of New York. It just came out a couple days ago on February 3rd. So guys, that's it. Uh, if you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe hit the subscribe button. If you liked this video, give it, a, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. If nothing else, leave me a comment below. Let me know, did you pick this up? 
Did you read it? If so, what did you think? What other interesting stories are you reading right now? Is there anything that you uh, recommend that I check out and um, you know maybe do a spotlight video on? Uh, I'm, I'm always looking for good stories and I'll read anything that, uh, that may be interesting. So guys, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.